Father, we bless your name today. We thank you for the people of God. Thank you because you brought us together so you can bless us and we can spread the blessing everywhere. We're asking, Lord, according to your word, according to your revelation, everyone will have the very best even as we're coming to the end of the year in jesus name all the promises you have given us from the beginning of this year from the beginning of our christian lives until this time recollect everyone bundle everyone together and pour out your blessings according to those promises in Jesus' name. Bless your people, Lord. We pray that none of us will miss your plan of escape in Jesus' name. We'll escape from the great tribulation. We'll escape from the power of the enemy. And we focus our attention on going with the Lord at the time of his coming in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. We can sit down. We're coming to Revelation chapter 6. In Revelation chapter 6, I need to remind you, it's a progression of what had been happening from the beginning of the revelation, the book of Revelation. In chapter 1, we saw the glorified Christ. In chapters 2 and 3, we saw the church and the message of Christ unto the church. Chapter 4, the heavens opened. The church is raptured at the end of chapter 3. And we find the church in heaven around the throne before the throne of God and then in chapter 5 we recognize the almighty the ancient of days sitting on the seat of authority final authority on the seat of sovereignty on the seat of royalty he had a book in his hand and that book he had in his hand Con, con, uh, contains all the plan of God to recover the whole earth, to renovate the whole earth, and to restore the whole earth to its original glory until it will be given to Christ. There was a search made in heaven who is worthy to open the book and to take the book from the hand of the Almighty and nobody in heaven, nobody on earth, nobody under the earth was found. Because of that, John the Beloved wept. As he wept, a strong angel came to him and said, Weep not, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Somebody shall praise the Lord. The lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed to take the book, to break the seals, and to open the book. And then John was looking for a lion, and behold, there appeared a lamb, as if had been slain, but he got up, and then he got to the ancient of days, and he got the book out of the hand of the Almighty God. It was then the whole of heaven broke into praise and worship, because Christ the Lord, Christ the Lion, Christ the Lamb had taken that book. Now, the content of the book, instead of being read, will be demonstrated. The content of the book, as the Lord will break the first seal, what should have been read out of that book will be dramatized. And then the second seal is broken. What you should have read for you to understand and for you to comprehend what is in the book, in the role, will be dramatized. And the third, and the fourth, and the fifth, and the sixth, until the seventh. And when everything has been opened and everything dramatized, the conclusion and the result of opening the book and reading what is there, 
and dramatizing what is there, the conclusion will be that all the kingdoms of the world will become the kingdom of our God and the kingdom of his Christ. That means the whole earth at the final end of opening all the seals would have been restored, would have been reclaimed, would have been renovated, would have been redeemed and handed over to the Lord who will be King of kings and Lord of lords. Understand, as we come to chapter 6, we have gone through and we have passed over chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapters 4 and 5, the church has been raptured into uh, the presence of God in heaven and now on earth. What we're reading about in chapter 6 is what will be taking place on earth while the church will be in heaven with the Lord. With that understanding, you understand that this is the period of the great tribulation. We're looking at chapter 6. I'm going to read verse 1, and then I'll read verses 16 and 17. Revelation chapter 6, verse 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts living creatures saying, Come and see. When the Lamb opened the first seal, we would have expected, because the question in chapter 5 is, who is able to take the book and to open the book and then to break the seals and to reach the contents therein? We would have expected that the angel would tell John, come and read, but no, come and see. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, and said to the mountains and to the rocks, fall on us, hide us from the face of him that seated on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. In verse 17, it says, for the great day of his wrath is come, and who is able to stand, that is to stand before that Lamb? to stand before the, before the wrath of God and the wrath of the Lamb. Today we're looking at the message, the world's unprecedented suffering during the great tribulation. The world's unprecedented suffering during the great tribulation. What do we call it the great tribulation? Because that's what Christ called it, Matthew chapter 24. Reading from verse 21, in Matthew chapter 24, reading from verse 21, the very words of Jesus, as Jesus explained, coming from verse 3, what will be happening at the end of the world and just before his coming. And he has spoken about different things, which we shall look at later as God gives us the time. But now in verse 21, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not uh, since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. It says at this time now of the opening of the seals, what will be happening in the world after the church would have gone will be a time of great tribulation, a great time of suffering, a great time of calamity that had never been since the beginning of the world. What does that mean? Look at all the wars in the world, all the famines in the world, all the viruses, coronavirus, plus all the other viruses that ever came on the world, all the sufferings in the world, put everything together. The time of the great tribulation, the time of the wrath of God, the time of the breaking of the seals will go beyond all of them. And no, nor ever shall be. It will be a time of suffering at its peak. A time of tribulation at its peak, and a time of calamity and damage at its peak. 
And Isaiah tells us in Isaiah chapter 13, reading from verse 6, about this time, and he's talking about something that is worldwide. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 6, How are ye? For the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Go to verse 9. In verse 9, it says, Behold, the day of the Lord is come, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, it says, Therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth, shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts in the day of his fierce anger. It will be all over the world. And I pray you will not be in the world at such a time in Jesus' name. We're looking at three things in the message today. Number one, the unconfined suffering of the great tribulation seals. The seals are the seals of the great tribulation. And the suffering will be unconfined. That means it will not be confined to one spot, one geographical location or region of the world. It will be worldwide. The unconfined suffering of the great tribulation seals. Number two, the uncommon supplication of the great tribulation says, the great tribulation says will be the people that come to the Lord during the period of the great tribulation. And those saints will be tortured, they'll be persecuted, many of them will lose their lives, and then they'll make a supplication to God when they get to the other side. It will be an uncommon supplication because the great tribulation says, number three, the unconverted sufferers in the great tribulation shakings. The Lord is going to shake the earth. I'm going to shake every mountain, every hill, the stars, the moon, everything will be shaking. And then there will be the suffering of the unconverted at such a time. The unconverted sufferers in the great tribulation shakings. Let's come to number one. Number one, what's your number one over there? Tell me out aloud. God bless you, the unconfined sufferings of the great tribulation seals. What it is from verse one again? It says, and I saw when the lamp opened one of the seals. And I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, come and see. You'll find from verse 1 to verse 8, two verses at a time, 1 and 2, 3 and 4, 5 and 6, 7 and 8, that four seals were opened. And each of those seals opened an angel, an heavenly person said, come and see. And when he saw, something happened in each of the seals. And there are four of them. Number one, the worldwide deception of the false prince. And then for the second seal, number two, the wanton destruction by the fierce powers. And then number three, when the third seal is opened, the wartime destitution of a famished populace. And number four, when the fourth seal is opened, you have the woeful deaths of frightening proportions. Number one is the worldwide deception of the false prince. Look at verse 2 there, Revelation chapter 6 and verse 2. And I saw, remember, the angel said, come and see. 
And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. He said, when the angel said, come and see, as I saw, instead of seeing uh, what was reaching, uh, like the writing on the wall at the time of Belshazzar, I thought I'll see something to read, but he said, I saw a white horse. And when the Bible mentions a horse, what's that signifying in Proverbs chapter 21, reading from verse 31? Proverbs chapter 21, reading from verse 31, any time uh, there, was, uh, there was a horse like that, look at this, this the horse is prepared against the day of battle. The horse is prepared for the day of battle. So, as you see, seal one broken, a horse. Seal two broken, a horse. Seal three broken, a horse. And seal four broken, a horse. It's the time and the day and the period of battle. The horse is prepared against the day of battle. And then he said, if you come back to Revelation chapter 6, verse 2, he said, I saw a horse, white horse, and he that sat on that horse had a bow, and there's no arrow to shoot. And even though he's not shooting any arrow at all, it appears he goes on to conquer, and he's conquering. What does that mean? White, everybody would have thought somebody sitting on a white horse, and he's conquering, he's overcoming, he's not shooting an arrow. That might be Christ. That might be the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And somebody may say, that is our Christ. Hold on. Christ, the Lamb, is the one opening the seal. And he's not the one that is coming out again. See, see, the one that is opening the seal. When his time comes, we'll be told that this is the wrath of the Lamb. Who is this one on the horse? It's a prince, a false prince. He will come as if I'm not going to fight. I'm not going to shoot any arrow. Look at my bow. It doesn't have any arrow. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ doesn't have only one crown. He has crowns on his head. That's Christ. Christ does not have a bow or an arrow. He has a sword coming out of his mouth. And with the sword of his mouth, he's going to destroy all his enemies. This is the false Christ, the false priest, the Antichrist. And when he has a bow without an arrow, it's by deception. He will conquer the world and they will accept him as their prince. We're told in Daniel chapter 8, reading from verse 23, Daniel chapter 8, reading from verse 23, please open your Bible, and in the latter time of their kingdom, understand, in the latter time we would have gone, in the latter time after the rapture, in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding that sentences shall stand up. Look at verse 24. It says in verse 24, and his power shall be mighty. He will go on to conquer and he'll keep on conquering, but not by his own power. Satan will energize him. Satan will empower him, not by his own power, and he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and practice, and it shall destroy the mighty and the holy, the holy people. How? Verse 25. In verse 25, and through his policy also, it shall cause craft, craftiness to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart by peace. Look at that. By peace, a bow without arrow. By peace, coming out and conquering without fighting. By peace, shall he destroy many. 
he shall also stand up against the prince of princes. He'll say, I am the prince. He'll come in competition with the prince of princes, but then we're told, but he shall be broken without hand. That's number one, the worldwide deception of the false prince. We're looking at number two now, the wanton destruction by fierce powers. We're coming to Revelation chapter 6 and we're reading from verse 3. Revelation chapter 6, verse 3. And when he had opened the second seal, when he, Christ, he, the Lamb, he, the one that has the book, the roll in his hand, and he breaks the seal, and he opens the seal, and then now there is something to be read there, but it will not be read, it will be dramatized. When he had opened the seal, the second seal, I heard the second beast, living creature there, say, come and see. And what did John see? Look at verse 4. In verse 4, and there went out another horse that was red. The first horse that was white, and as to deceive the people, he comes, is righteous, is meek, is lowly, is your Christ. But now he comes in his true color. And this horse is red with no spot of white or any other color, completely red. And power was given him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. There was peace, verses 1 and 2. It's all deception. And he conquered by craft, by flattery, and by peace. That peace now he takes away from the earth. And as he does that, and they shall kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword, given to him who is on that red horse, a great sword. And then it said they shall kill one another. Killing one another, that's the time of war. And that is the time of bloodshed in Jeremiah chapter 8, reading from verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 8, reading from verse 11. This is the peace the people thought they had, and everybody will be rejoicing. There is peace at the beginning of that great revelation. The church is gone. They say those church people are the troublemakers. Now they are gone and we have peace. It says, for they have healed the daughter of the heart of the daughter of my people, slightly saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Peace, peace, when there is no peace. It tells us in verse 15 there, in verse 15 we look for peace, but no good came, time of tribulation, and for a time of health, and behold trouble. That's the time that will come upon the people of the world. What did Jeremiah call that period in particular? Look at chapter 30. Chapter 30 of Jeremiah, we're looking at verse 5. It says in Jeremiah, chapter 30, and we're reading here from verse 5, Thus says the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, of, of fear, and not of peace. In verse 6, it says, in verse 6, As ye now, and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins, as a woman in travail, as a woman in labor pains, and all faces turned into paleness. Verse 7 tells us the meaning of all that, that period of the Great Tribulation, what will be happening in chapter 30, verse 7, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. It is even the time of Jacob's tribulation. It is even the time of Jacob's fairy trial, but it shall be saved out of it. What does that mean? Jesus said, except those days were shortened, all there'll be no flesh that will remain alive. 
but for the elect's sake, because of the children of Israel, those days shall be shortened, but it shall be saved out of it. And so that second seal that opened will open the world to a time of destruction and devastation by war. Let, let's come to Revelation now chapter 6 and verse 5. The third seal is going to be broken. And then we're going to see what will happen. We're looking at uh, Revelation chapter 6 verse 5. And when he, remember that he again is the Lamb of God, is our Christ, is the Lion of the tribe of Judah, is the one that took the book out of the hand of the Almighty, and is the one that is opening each of the seals. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the, the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. Look at verse 6. In verse 6 it says, And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts saying, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou, hot not the oil and the wine. Have you noticed there, it said a horse came out. Have you seen the change? It will be going from bad to worse. It started with a white horse and then a red horse. And now we have a black horse. And remember, the horse is for the time of battle, which he wore against the inhabitants of the world. And now when it says a black horse came out, what does that symbolize? Lamentation chapter 5, look at verse 9. Lamentation chapter 5, we're reading from verse 9. It says in verse 9, we got our bread with the peril of our lives. We got our bread with the peril of our lives because of the sword of the wilderness is seen in the second seal there was war in the second seal there was the red which is the color of blood and fire and people were killing themselves but now as a result of that when there is war there'll be no time for uh, cultivation no time for farming and the pro uh, food production will go very low People are scamping, they are running for their lives. They want to get into safety. Nobody is uh, going to be planting anything. And the result of that will be that there will be scarcity of food. And so when, you, when the people go to their places to buy food at that time, uh, they're going to buy the food at the peril of their lives. What does that mean? It means, okay, you want to buy food, have you given a, a submission and royalty and total authority to the one on the throne? You say, who is that? The prince, the false prince. Have you taken the mark? Are you part of the people that follow him? Then you have to step back, anybody in the world at that time, and say, what's the consequence of taking the mark of the beast? If you take that mark, you can buy some food. If you don't take the mark, then you will suffer with hunger until you die. That's what it means. But we got our bread with the peril of our lives because of the sword in the wilderness. If anybody did not take that mark, he'll be killed because he says, I believe in Jesus. Uh -uh. You believe in another king, another prince. When he is there, the fellow will be killed at the peril of their lives. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, our skin was black. Our skin was black. Remember, white horse, red horse, black horse. And now this black horse demonstrates something. Our skin was black like an oven because of the terrible famine. 
because of a kind of famine that had never been in the world. No, no, ever shall be. That's the time the Lord Jesus Christ spoke about. We're coming to Revelation now, chapter 6. We're reading from verse 7. Revelation chapter 6, we're reading from verse 7. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the four beasts say, Come and see. This is number four now. White horse, red horse, black horse. What's going to happen as the fourth seal is open? Look at verse 8. In verse 8, and I looked, and behold, a pale horse. That, uh, that pale in the original is a kind of green. But then it's pale, it's not bright and sharp. And his name that sat on him was death. Understand from the false peace. And then all the wars that will be happening when peace is taken from the earth. And then the famine, there will be diseases as a result of that. And what will happen after you have the, the false peace and the war and the killings and everything like that and famine, there will be death. That's why it says now this one that follows death and hell followed with him and power was given he unto them over the fourth of the earth, the fourth part of the earth. You understand that? That if you have uh, 20, the fourth part will be five. If you have a hundred, the fourth part will be 25, 25 percent. And if the population of the world is six billion at that time, just for calculation, one quarter will be 1.4, 1.5 billion people that will die at that time. And they die without Christ. And they die without hope. And they die a terrible kind of death. Look at what has happened now. This pandemic that has been on, that's the coronavirus. You, you understand? Just about one point something million have died all through this period of more than six months when it started in the world. But at that time, it will be 1.5 billion people if the population uh, would be 6 billion. And so that means it's a great number that will die within a short time. And it will not be a peaceful death. It will not be a calm death. It will be violent death, terrible death. You will not be here at that time. I will not be here at that time. You will not be here in Jesus' name. And then it says that one fourth of the earth, not of, uh, you know, just this country or just this country. There are some people that will say that time of the great tribulation, Nigeria is too far away, Ghana is too far away, and Africa is too far away. It may happen over there around uh, Jerusalem. This is for the whole earth. Look at it yourself. The fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with bees of the earth. That's what will take place at such a time. Thank God I will not be here. If you are born again, thank God you will not be here. If you are righteous, thank God you will not be here. If the grace of God is in your life, thank God you will not be here in Jesus' name. That will be the time of such great tribulation. Let's come to Matthew chapter 24. In Matthew chapter 24, the Lord Jesus Christ gave everything to his own disciples. Look at Matthew chapter 24 and we're reading from verse 3. In verse 3, it says, look at it from verse 3, Matthew chapter 24, it says, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, his disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, what shall, what shall, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Understand? This is what will be happening at the end of the world, at the time of the coming 
coming of Christ. Look at verse 4. In verse 4 it says, Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Number 1 is deception. In verse 5 it says, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. That the false seal, the false prince, the false Christ, the antichrist, making himself the real prince. Number one, we're looking at verse, verse six now. In verse six, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. That's seal number two. You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, the deception of peace in verses, in verses 4 and 5 will be taken away, and then there are the wars and rumors of wars. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, it says, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. That's coming to number 3 now, because after the fall peace then you have wars and rumors of wars and then you have the famines and pestilences and then in verse 8 it tells us all these are the beginning of sorrows the beginning of the great tribulation when the church would have gone I pray that time you'll be in heaven looking down on what is happening on the earth in Jesus name we're coming to point number two now the uncommon supplication of the great tribulation says uncommon supplication of the great tribulation says let's come to revelation chapter 6 and we're reading from verse 9 revelation chapter 6 we're reading from verse 9 and when he had opened the fifth seal i saw under the altar the souls of them that was slain for the word of God and for the testimony and for the testimony which they held. Hold on now. Remember, by this time, by the time of the first seal, the church has been raptured. What's the rapture? The trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise. What does that mean? Their dead body will be resurrected. Their spirit and their soul that had been in heaven will join with their resurrected body. And then they will go up to meet the Lord. And then we which are alive that will not die will be changed, will be given an incorruptible body. So body, soul, and spirit will go to heaven and will go to be with the Lord. When Enoch went to be with the Lord, his body, soul, and spirit went all together as an entity. When Elijah went to heaven, body, soul, and spirit went to heaven as an entity. Not that he dropped the body here and the soul went, but so in the rapture we go. The whole man, spirit, soul, and body. But look at these ones now. When the fifth seal is opened, when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar, tell me, the souls of them, they died during the great tribulation, and their body was on earth, but their souls went to be with the Lord. These are not people that were raptured. The people who are raptured, they are there with their whole body, soul, and spirit. But these was the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. When were they slain? They were slain during that great tribulation. Because they will not accept the mark of the Antichrist. That's why they were slain for the testimony that they held for the word of God and for the testimony that they held. Hold on now. The question is, will people get saved at the time of the great tribulation? And how can they get saved? The church is no more here. 
to answer that question whether the people on earth could get saved at that time or not let's look at acts of the apostles we're looking at acts of the apostles chapter 2 and verse 18 in verse 18 it says and on my servants and on my handmaids I will pour out in those days my spirit and they shall prophesy look at verse 19 in verse 19 and I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor or smoke you see that there'll be signs in the sky there'll be signs on the earth there'll be blood time of war there'll be fire devastation there'll be burnings and killings and vapors or smoke look at verse 20 in verse 20 and the sun shall be turned into darkness and moon and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord come before the great day the great day of wrath and the notable day before they come and then in verse 21 it says and it shall come to pass remember this during the great tribulation now when the moon is dark and when the sun is also not giving its light and when there is blood and vapor of smoke and when there's a great tribulation at that same time and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the lord everybody tell me shall be saved so at that time during the great tribulation the same is salvation any time anyone that calls on the name of the lord shall be saved but as they get saved at that time to keep that salvation and to keep on holding on until the lord will come back again after the end of the great tribulation they really have to hold on and they have to have real courage and they will be mattered that's why in this second point we're looking at the courage of mattered tribulation says the courage of mattered tribulation says let's come back to revelation chapter 2 verse 13 Revelation chapter 2, we're reading from verse 13. It's talking about the courage the people of that time will possess, those who will stand their ground and they will say, No matter what happens, we miss the rapture. They miss the rapture, but they are not going to miss the second coming. It says, Revelation chapter 2, verse 13 I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name and has not denied my faith even in those days wherein Antipas my faithful matter Antipas my faithful sage Antipas my, my faithful disciple who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth remember during that time of the great tribulation, Satan with the Antichrist will be reigning upon the people. And if anybody will say they are not for Satan, they are not for the Antichrist, they will pay for that with their blood. It will demand courage. But you know, if God can give courage to the people at that time, today, God will give us courage. Amen. You will live a courageous life in Jesus' name. Number two now is the concern of martyred tribulation says. What's their concern? Let's come back to Revelation chapter 6 and verse 10. We'll see their courage. They gave their lives. Nobody could make them compromise. And they will not yield or bend just because of martyrdom or because of persecution. But now in verse 10, and they cried, these are the souls under the altar. These are the martyred saints during the great tribulation. They cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? What kind of prayer is that? Dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth 
why were they praying a prayer like this? Understand? It's going to be a different dispensation. The age of grace, the age of mercy, and the age of the period of the children of God, love your enemy, and then when they persecute you, pray for them, and do good unto them, and the good you do unto them will be like coals of fire that will melt their heart to submission, but the church is gone. And this is tribulation period. And God had said that there'll be a time of vengeance, a time when he will avenge the blood of the people that the wicked, cruel people kill. And they were only telling the Lord, Lord, you said you will avenge the blood of your matters, your, the blood of the faithful ones. Do you, as you have said, their concern is that God will be found faithful and holy and true. Look at what Jesus had said in Matthew chapter 23, reading from verse 33. Matthew chapter 23, verse 33. It says, ye serpents, are ye generation of vipers? How can ye escape the damnation of hell? Verse 34. In verse 34, Wherefore, behold, I sent unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them ye shall scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. What did Jesus say will happen after that? Verse 35, in verse 35, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zechariah, the son of Barachias, whom he slew between the temple and the altar. The Lord said there will be a time of vengeance upon the people at such a time. It tells us in Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, we're reading from verse 30. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 30, For ye know him that has said, Vengeance belongeth unto mine, I will recompense says the Lord that's the concern those souls under the altar the concern they had they said you said you will avenge you said you will recompense you will you said you'll pay them back in the things they have done and again the Lord shall judge his people verse 31 in verse 31 it is a fearful scene to fall into the hands of the living God. Verse 32. Verse 32 says, But well, call to remembrance the former days in which after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great fight of affliction. Their concern was that the faithful God will do as he has said, he will avenge their blood. Number three is the comfort of the martyred tribulation saints. What's their comfort? As they were praying to God that won't you have mercy on us and do what you have said. And then we're told in Revelation chapter 6 verse 11. Revelation chapter 6 verse 11. The comfort of martyred tribulation saints and white robes were given unto every one of them. White robes were given unto every one of them already. They were being rewarded now because of their faithfulness. And it was said unto them that they should rest. They had entered into the rest of the Lord. Now abideth rest for the people of God. But they should rest until their fellow servants. The Lord accepted them as servants. And is going to reward them as servants. And there were fellow servants of theirs that should be killed as they were that the number should be fulfilled 
what a great comfort that even during that time there will be people who will meet the Lord in heaven. But we would have gone before that time. You would have gone before that time in Jesus' name. Look at the comfort, Revelation chapter 7, and I'm reading from verse 9. Revelation chapter 7, verse 9, it said, After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations, and kindreds, and, uh, and people, and tongues and they stood before the throne and before the Lamb and they were clothed with white robes and palms in their hands and then in verse 10 it says and they cried with a loud voice saying salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb and then in verse 11 it says and all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the 24 bees and, and the four bees and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God in verse 12 it says saying amen let the church shout amen. amen blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God tell me tell me forever and ever amen Verse 13 now in verse 13, and one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are rich in white robes, and whence are they? Who are these who are rich in white robes, and where did they come from? Whence are they? Look at verse 14, in verse 14, and I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest, and he said unto me, These are they which are come out of these are they which are come out of out of great tribulation and they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb and then in verse 15 it says and therefore a day before the throne of god and serve him day and night in his temple and he shall sit he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them verse 16 it says and they shall hunger no more Remember, those who suffered in the great tribulation, the Antichrist will not allow them to buy or sell. Many of them will die of hunger, and some of them will be beheaded. And it says these ones now, because they endured, it says they hunger no more, and they shall thirst no more. Neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. And then it says in verse 17, for the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them. They will not allow them to have food during the great tribulation, but then they go up yonder and the Lamb of God that seated on the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters and God tell me and God and God and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes they will cry no more and if that will happen to those, tribulation says, I want those of us today who are rapturable saints. You will hunger no more. Amen. You will thirst no more. Amen. All your tears will wipe away in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever persecution we have today is nothing compared with the persecution and the suffering and the trial, the fairy trial and the tribulation that will happen at that time. Whatever difficulties we have today, whatever challenges we have today is nothing in comparison with what they will have. And if they will stand at that time, today I will stand. The Holy Ghost is helping us today, I can stand. 
the word of God is for us today, I will stand. The promises of God are yes and amen, I will stand. And God will not allow anything to happen today beyond your strength, beyond your ability to, uh, to escape and to overcome. If they will stand at that time today, I will stand in Jesus' name. But you know, uh, there may be those who will say, okay, there are saints that will stay at that time. Uh, I think I will wait until that time. You know what? If you cannot take the privilege now at this time uh, when we can come to church, you cannot take the opportunity at this time uh, when you can read the Bible to you and interpret the Bible to you. If you cannot stand at this time with a little insult, a little assault, a little persecution, a little trial, you are trembling and shaking. If you cannot endure missing a meal, a single meal at this time, you are so hungry, I don't know what I'm going to do anymore. There's not enough food. The food I like, I cannot get to buy. This time of lockdown, look at the condition now and they tell us to come to church how can i come to church now if you cannot stand a little bit of hunger now that time when if you refuse the mark of the antichrist you'll not be able to buy or sell your children will not be able to go to school not you'll not be able to anything literally at that time politics will be against you the kings will be against you the antichrist will be against you the wrath of god will be against you the wrath of the lamp will be against you there'll be war there'll be devastation there'll be everything if you cannot stand today is it at that time you will stand you will stand today you will endure today and Jesus said for those of us who are living today he that shall endure to the end the same shall be saved I will endure to the end You'll be one of the wise virgins today in Jesus' name. Now we come to point number three. Point number three, we have the unconverted sufferers in the great tribulation shakings. There's going to be mighty shaking, terrible shaking. At that time, we're coming to Revelation chapter 6, and we're reading from verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of air and the moon became as blood and then in verse 13 in verse 13 it says and the stars of heaven fell on the earth and even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she's shaking of a mighty wind and then in verse 14 we're told that the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain every mountain and island were moved out of their places verse 15 says and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bunch man and every free man look at this seven of them number one the kings number two and the great men number three and the rich men number four and the and the chief captains number five and the mighty men number six and every bond man number seven and every free man and they themselves are in the days or in the rocks of the mountains as you look at revelation you know that seven means completeness and fullness all people on earth at that time those who will not submit to the king of kings and the lord of laws and they will not submit to the lamb the lamb that gave his life for the redemption of your world at that time they will hide in the rocks because they didn't hide in the rock of ages that was cleft for them the rock that followed them that rock is christ and because they did not hide in the redemption of the rock they did not hide in the atonement of the rock they did not hide in the provision 
of the rock. They did not hide under the saving hand, the security of the Lord Jesus Christ. At that time, at the time of the great tribulation, they will not be hiding under the rocks and the mountains. And then in verse 16, look at what he'll say in verse 16. And it says, and they said unto the mountains and the rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that seated on the throne then they will know that God is almighty. They will know that God has all the power. They will know that God comes out to wage war against the inhabitants of the earth. And because of that, they will say the rock shall hide them. The mountain shall hide them from the face of him that seated on the throne and from the rose of the land and from the wrath of the Lamb. Have you ever thought about that? The Lamb, the peace of the Lamb, the Lamb, the gentleness of the Lamb, the Lamb, the love of the Lamb, the Lamb, everything coming from the Lamb is good and merciful and peaceful. But this time of the great tribulation, the Lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ will not be coming with the peace, will not be coming with invitation. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It will not be at that time. It will be at the time of the wrath of the Lamb. And then all of them together, the kings and everyone will say, hide us from that wrath of the Lamb. And then we're told in verse 17, it says, for the great day of his wrath has come. The great day, the tribulation time, the peak and the height, the great day of his tribulation is come. And who shall stand, who shall be able to stand. Can I show you something? You know, as we look at the whole of chapter 6, we see wrath in three dimensions. Wrath in three dimensions. Number one, the wrath of the Antichrist. The wrath of the Antichrist. And then one of the angels said, come and see. And then I saw a horse came out and one that rode on it. That's the Antichrist. And then there's no peace. Take peace from the earth. There will were, there were be wars and rumors of wars. And then a great sword in his hand. And then there will be famine as well. And there will be death and hell. That's the wrath of the Antichrist. Antichrist. And then there's the wrath of the adversaries. Who are the adversaries? They'll kill one another. If you say you are not following after the Antichrist, they are not going to say they are going to report to the Antichrist. They are going to report to one station somewhere. The neighbors will just uh, take the sword and kill the first. Look at this one. It's rebellious against the king. It's rebellious against the Antichrist. They'll be the wrath of the adversaries. And now number three, the third dimension of the wrath that will come. That's the wrath of the Almighty. Now think about that because they now said who is able to stand because of the wrath of him that sits upon the throne and the wrath of the Lamb. The wrath of the Antichrist, number one. The wrath of the adversaries, number two. And the wrath of the Almighty, number three. When all that wrath comes together, the wrath of of the Antichrist and the wrath of the adversaries and the wrath of the Almighty, everything coming together upon the whole earth, every corner of the earth, every region of the earth, every location on the earth, where will the sinner hide? If there's going to be any hiding, if there's going to be any escape, this is the time to escape for your life. We're looking at this in this section, the unconverted sufferers of the great tribulation in the great tribulation shakings. There's going to be a great shaking, a mighty shaking, and then the unconverted people will suffer. Number one, the terrible expressions of divine wrath. The terrible expressions of divine wrath. We've read already from Revelation chapter 6 and from verse 12 to verse 14. Let's come to Isaiah chapter 13 and see that this time will be the time of terrible wrath and the time of, ter of terror upon the people of the world at that time. Isaiah chapter 13, I'm reading here from verse 9. Behold,
behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger. The day cruel with fierce anger and with wrath, and to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Look at verse 10, in verse 10, for the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall cause a light, shall not cause a light to shine. And then in verse 11, in verse 11, and I will punish, tell me, and I will punish, say it aloud, the world, the world. The time of the great tribulation is the time of wrath upon the world, punishment upon the world, terror upon the world, devastations upon the world, destructions upon the world, destitution upon the world, war and rumors of war, of war upon the whole world, a time of farming upon the world, a time of suffering upon the whole world. And God says, I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and I will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. In verse 12, it says in verse 12, I will shake, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than gold, than a golden wedge of offer. And then in verse 13, it says, therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth, the heavens, the sky, not a part of the sky, it's all the sky, and not a part of the earth. I will shake the earth, and the earth shall move out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. Number two is the trembling earth bounds under divine wrath. That's what we read in Revelation chapter 6, verse 15, verse 16, and verse 17. And it tells us in Isaiah chapter 2, Isaiah chapter 2, reading from verse 10. In Isaiah chapter 2, reading from verse 10, enter into the rock and hide thee in the dust for the fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty. You know, Isaiah, the same Isaiah that prophesied about the first coming of Christ unto us a child is born unto us his son is given he also prophesied about the second coming of the son of God the government shall be upon a shoulder and remember the time of the great tribulation is the time when the earth will be shaken when the earth will be renovated when the earth will be reclaimed and when the earth will be redeemed and then brought unto the Lord for the Lord Jesus Christ to reign supreme upon the earth and it says it is that same Isaiah that spoke about the first coming that also spoke about the second coming and is that same Isaiah now that is telling us that the people they run into the rock and they will hide themselves in the doors for the fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty in verse 11 in verse 11 it says the lofty looks of man shall be humbled and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day and then in verse 12 it says for the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty and upon everyone that is lifted up and he shall be brought low is the time of the great wrath of God. Now the question is, when the stars begin to fall, and when the mountains begin to move, and when the terror of the Lord and the judgment of the Lord, when that judgment begins to fall upon this world, will the world say, okay, God, hands up. We raise up our hands in surrender. 
will repent because of all this wrath and because of all this judgment in running to the rock and in running under the mountains will they surrender to the Lord so that they can be converted look at Revelation chapter 9 we're reading from verse 20 Revelation chapter 9 and we're reading here from verse 20 it says and the rest of the men that were not killed by these plagues the rest of the men that were not killed by these plagues when the first seal is opened and then it appears there is peace and the second the seal is opened war and rumors of wars and a great sword was given in the hand of the one on that horse a red horse and they were killing one another and then after that there's farming there's pestilence there's earthquake and then after that death and hell will follow after all those plagues one quarter of the earth 25 percent of the world population will die just like that there'll be those who remain on the earth and the rest of the men which were not killed of these plagues yet repented not yet repented not of the works of their hands that they should not worship devils or idols of and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood which neither can see nor hear nor walk verse 21 in verse 21 neither repented they of their mothers and they killed one another neither they justify themselves that yes we did that because those people did not bow to the prince and all that they will not repent and neither repented they of their mothers and of their sorceries and of their fornication and of their saves at that time they will not repent many of them but in our own case thank god you'll not be here at that time are you planning to be in the world at that time i said are you planning to be at the world at that time you will not see the antichrist you will not know the antichrist the people who are going about to stamp his number on the forehead, on the palm, on the body of the people of the earth, they will not stamp the mark of the Antichrist upon you in Jesus' name. There is opportunity today to be saved. And that's why we're not waiting for that time because today is the day of mercy and today is the day of salvation. Today is the day when we can call upon the Lord and the Lord will have mercy upon us, upon everyone in Jesus' name. How do we escape? That's number three now. The timely escape from divine wrath, the timely escape from divine wrath. Look at Hebrews chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 1. Hebrews chapter 2, we're looking at verse 1. Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them sleep. We need to give the more honest heed to the things which we have heard. What have we heard? We have heard of the glory of Christ. Revelation chapter 1. What have we heard? We have heard of the message of Christ to the churches. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Therefore, we ought to give the more honesty to the things which we have heard. What have we heard? We have heard about the throne of God. And we have heard about the fact that all of us who are created and recreated for him by him, we should give him pleasure and honor and glory. We have heard there's a book in the hand of the Almighty. And when those book, when that book is open and all the seals are broken, there will be devastation, there will be war, there will be destruction, desolation in this world. And we have heard that if we're going to escape, this is the day of salvation. It says, wherefore, we ought to give the more honesty to the things which we have heard. What have we heard? The message of salvation we heard in the church. What have we 
had without holiness no man shall see the lord what have we had the lord is coming prepare for the lord because he's coming what have we had it will come suddenly it will come when people are not prepared we ought to give them more honesty to the things which we have heard so that after we come from the church and we go back home we don't leave the message in the church we don't leave the message on the pew on the chair where we're sitting and then we get back home we forget salvation we get back home we forget that the rapture can happen at any time we get back home and then we begin to live like the people of the world and drink like the people of the world and then fight like the people of the world therefore we ought to give the more honesty to the things which were found lest at any time at any time of marriage at any time of wedding at any time we're doing burial ceremony at any time we're going to school at any time we're going to have certificate at any time we're trying to have we're trying to make ends meet and then it's at that time many people forget about salvation they forget about conviction they forget about conversion they forget about their consecration and dedication to the lord at the time at any time at the time when you're sorrowful at the time when you're sick that's the time some people say they want to take their lives they want to kill themselves because look at what i'm going through they forget everything they have heard in church they forget everything they have heard in the gospel less at any time sometimes you know people are getting married and then they're going to do reception now and as you look at the reception after the wedding it's like they have never been in church they have never read of any standard of the word of god they have never heard he that shall be a friend of the world shall be an enemy of god they forget everything they have heard once they're doing some ceremony and they're doing celebration they forget that the lord can come at any time and if they are left behind they will cry more than more than tears they will cry blood because their chance will be gone forever and ever therefore you ought to give the more honesty to the things you have heard lest at any time you should let them sleep and then it says in verse 2 in verse 2 it says for if the word spoken by angels was steadfast in the past the word spoken by angels steadfast and now as we come to revelation it says in chapter one jesus gave the revelation to john through an angel as you come to chapter two to the angel of the church in ephesus angel of the church in smyrna angel of the church in philadelphia angel of the church in, uh, in tatara angel of the church in uh, in sardis angel of the church in Pagamos, angel of the church in Laodicea, the word spoken by angels took effect. And now, as you come uh, to Revelation chapter 4, and the angels stood around, and then chapter 5, the angels and the elders they worship the Lord. You come to chapter 6, and the angels said, Come and see all these things that are revealed by angels. The word given by angel will be steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience obedience received a just recompense of reward and then it says in verse 3 how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation salvation redemption adoption into the family of God you have heard about salvation that if you repent and turn away from your sin completely and you force you confess and forsake your sin and you're broken in your heart and you have sorrow for sin and you call upon the Lord and say Lord I know you died for me I believe you you will save me and then it will give you grace to go and see no more and you live the life of a real child of God so that any time any moment that trumpet of God shall sound you will hear that sound I said you will hear that sound and you will go with the people of God in Jesus name how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? There are people who reject salvation. There's no hope for them. There are people who have salvation and they neglect salvation. They neglect salvation. You went to school, you got certificate, and then you dumped that certificate somewhere. 
and now you're looking for work and then they say come for interview but while you are coming bring your certificate along all those things you wrote are in your uh, curriculum vitae in your cv and say i have this certificate and this and this and that bring everything along before we can even interview you but you neglected the certificates where did i keep them where are they now I cannot even find them anymore. And then you go empty handed and the man at the gate before you enter the interview room, he says, let me check your documents. Where is this certificate? Uh, actually, I got it, I had it, but I don't know where it is now. Very sorry, the instruction is that you cannot even enter except to bring all the documents, your salvation. Where did you keep your salvation? At the time you're running after this and that, where did you keep your salvation? At the time you're interacting with the people of the world, where did you keep your salvation? You act as if there's no salvation, although you are saved. You live as if there's no salvation, although you are born again at home between husband and wife. You abuse me, I will insult you. You slap me, I will, I will use another thing to, you know, to hurt you. You forgot your salvation. Where is your salvation? When you are here and there, the sin was gone. It's dropped away. It says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which was spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? You will not lose your salvation. You will not neglect your salvation. You will not abandon your salvation. You wake up and you sleep, you go to work, you come back, you do everything, and for one whole week you don't remember there's salvation anytime, only when you come to church, how many of you are saved? Okay, I was saved. And then I remember the date, I remember the time, where's the conviction in the heart? Is the Spirit of God bearing testimony with your heart that you are truly saved? Let's go back to Calvary. Let's go back to the cross and make sure that that salvation is still there. And following peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Be conscious of your salvation every time. And when the trumpet shall sound, if we don't see here again, I'll meet you at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. Rise up now and tell the Lord, O oh Lord, that salvation I will keep. Let the Spirit of God bear witness in your heart that that salvation is still there, that salvation is still there, and it gives us victory over sin. It makes us to go and sin no more. And anywhere you are, anything you do, you are conscious of that salvation. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer.